Namaskar learners. I, Harpreet Kaur, welcome you all on behalf of National Institute of Open Schooling, that is NIOS. As you all know that the motive of NIOS is education for all. That's why we keep on bringing for you our audio and video programs. And today, in this video program, we have brought something very important and interesting under the subject chemistry. We are going to talk about coordination compounds. What are we waiting for now? Let's start learning chemistry. Today we have with us Professor Sulek Chandra, who is Associate Professor from Zakir Hussain College, Delhi University. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you, madam. And we also have with us Dr. Rajiv Prasad, Academic Officer Chemistry, NIOS. Welcome, you, you, sir. Thank you. And now it's time for us to know about Werner's theory. Why Werner is known as the father of coordinate chemistry and what his theory is all about. So, Professor, please tell us about it. Yeah. So, I have just told you that Werner was the first chemist who was successfully explained the structure of the complexes and their formula. Okay. And that's why he got Nobel Prize in 1913 and that's why he is known as father of coordination chemistry. Okay. His observation has been divided into two categories known as postulates and experimental evidences. Okay. So according to Werner, this should be clear that every metal ion has two types of valencies. Mm -hmm. These are known as primary and secondary valencies. Okay. Primary valencies are also known as ionic valency, ionized. They can be easily ionized. Okay. And secondary valencies are non-ionizable. Primary valencies are also known as ionic valency. That they are satisfied, the students should understand positively. They are satisfied by the anions only. Cation or neutral molecule cannot be counted for the primary valencies. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the example. So they are satisfied by the anions only. And second important is in modern terminology, mm -hmm. primary valencies correspond to the oxidation number of the central metal ion. Okay. Or you can say that if you know the number of primary valencies, you can easily find out the oxidation state of the central metal ion. So they correspond to the oxidation state of the central metal ion. Since they are not in, present inside the coordination sphere, so geometry cannot be decided on the base or you can say they are non-directional in nature. Now secondary valencies can be satisfied by the anions or neutral molecules mm -hmm. or the cations. In modern terminology, we say secondary valencies correspond to the coordination number of the central metal ion. Okay. So if you know the coordination number, you can easily say the number of secondary valencies. Okay. For example, I have just told you CU and H3 6. It means the secondary valencies are 6. So, this should be clear here. Third postulate has been given. If any anion, mm -hmm. I have just told you the primary valencies are satisfied by the anions only. Mm -hmm. If any anion is present inside the coordination sphere, that will satisfy both primary as well as secondary valencies. Mm -hmm. But in properties, it resembles only with the secondary valency. So that is not primary valencies. We generally count them in secondary valency. These are the three postulates of Werner theory. Mm -hmm. Now, on the basis of experiment, Werner was able to explain the structure of complexes. As I have just told you, Tejat has synthesized CO, Cl3, 6NH3. He could not explain how many ammonia or how many water, uh, chloride ions are present mm -hmm. inside the coordination sphere. So first Werner has given precipitation. That is the you can say experimental evidences. Mm -hmm. Precipitation. He has taken the compounds and then add silver nitrate solution. Okay. Then he find out how many chloride ions are precipitated out. Mm -hmm. So he observed that when we add silver nitrate solution, three moles of chloride ions are, chloride ions are mm -hmm. precipitated out. For example, mm -hmm. you can take COCl3, 6NS3 plus silver nitrate, mm -hmm. he observed 3 AgCl. This indicates that it means, I have just told you earlier, that any part which is present outside the square bracket will be, will give qualitative test. So it means all the three chloride ions are present outside the square bracket. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the formula of the complex should be CONH3,6 within the square bracket mm -hmm. and Cl3 outside, outside. the square bracket. The second compound is synthesized COCl3 5NH3. 
again he added silver nitrate he found only two moles of silver nitrate it indicates that out of three only two chloride ions are present outside the square bracket and one present inside the square bracket so yes suggest the formula co nh35cl square bracket closed then cl2 similarly you can take co cl3 for nh3 where you can found only one agcl you will get again co nh3 four cl2 and one cl outside the condensate sphere and co cl3 three nh3 he found no precipitate with silver nitrate it means all the three chloride ions are present inside the condensate sphere okay. so you can easily say that co nh3 three cl3 so by using this experiment you can easily find out the formula of the complex you can take any complex by using this experimental evidences you can easily write down the formula of the complex second evidence is he has taken molar molar conductance mm -hmm. and molar conductance are the fixed values that depends the number of the ions present in the solution okay for example complex will be always single ion mm -hmm. suppose you take co nh3 6 cl3 mm -hmm. it is going to ionize like this co nh3 6 3 plus that is the one ion plus cl 3 cl minus mm -hmm. 3 ion the total number of ion will be 1 plus 3 4 ion okay. if number of ions are 4 then conductance will be around 400 similarly we can if the number of ions are 5 it will be 500 number of ions are 3 then conductance will be around 250 similarly if 1 to 2 uh, number of ions are there then conductance will be 100 so by calculating or by by finding the conductance again you can easily find out how many ions are present outside the condensate sphere okay so he has taken two evidences mainly i'm sure learners have understood the werner's theory and you are also jotting down the important points because let me give you a hint this theory is extremely important from your examination point of view and now something very important and very interesting for all of us to know dr rajiv let me ask you a question there is an agency mm -hmm. with the name iupac yes. what does it stand for and mm. what it does mm. it does stand for international union of pure and applied chemistry that is the union which decides how to give the iupac name of the complexes or organic compounds also and these rules are followed all over the world you can okay. say so these are the uh, authority to decide the iupac naming of different complexes and organic compounds okay so uh, to understand how to start iupac naming of mm -hmm. these complexes mm -hmm. there are certain rules okay. we have uh, formulated these rules says that the when we have to give iupac name of a complex the first step we have to start to give uh, to find out the oxidation number of central metal ion okay. that is the first step okay suppose in example co ns3 3 cl3 mm -hmm. so in this complex the our first motto is to find out the oxidation number of central metal ion that okay. is the cobalt when we calculate the central metal ion its oxidation number mm -hmm. then comes to the naming of ligands mm -hmm. what are the name of ligands what are their number mm -hmm. their rules are in this way in this process first we have decided the oxidation number what mm -hmm. is the uh, oxidation number of central metal right. ion now when we start naming of the ligands uh -huh. we have to use alphabetical order suppose there is chloride ion and th there is ammonia mm -hmm. also both mm -hmm. are ligands so we have to give the name first ammonia okay. and then chloride to naming these uh, ligands there are certain rules i am telling you that first step the naming of central metal their oxidation number determination okay. then the naming of ligands naming of their number okay. as a mono tri tetra mm -hmm. penta hexa okay. but in case of halogens suppose it is chloride or uh, bromide you have to use chlorido bromido iodo okay and in case of bidentate ligand we have used the number suppose there is a two bidentate ligand one base tris word these are the common terms which have we have to use mm -hmm. to give the iupac naming third portion is that when we give the iupac name first we have to write name of ligand then come to the name of central metal ion then comes to the its oxidation state mm -hmm. and last we have to use another rule that name of central metal ion that iron cobalt nickel what will the central metal ion okay how we have to write if the complex is 
anionic complex, suppose mm -hmm. the charge comes to the negative, mm -hmm. after the ionization, mm -hmm. we split the complex. In case of anionic complexes, the name of central metal ion ends with ATE. Okay. That if it is iron, we have to use ferrate. If it is cobalt, mm -hmm. cobaltate. Okay. If it is nickel, nickelate. Okay. In this way, in case of only anionic complexes, okay. this is the rule. Okay. We generally we can we cannot write iron. In case of neutral mm -hmm. complexes where there is no overall charges on mm -hmm. the conditional sphere, mm -hmm. we have to name the central metal as it is. Okay. If it is iron, if it is copper, if it is cobalt, as okay. such. In case of neutral cationic ligands, mm -hmm. we have also used the same process iron is iron, copper is copper, okay. silver is silver. Okay. Because basically, you have to take care that in case of anionic, the name of central metal atom will ends with ATE. That is the most important thing. Okay. And the general trend naming the epic rule, mm -hmm. uh, first I have explained you that the oxidation number, finding of oxidation number of central metal, then naming of ligands, their numbers, mm -hmm. and then central metal, name of central metal, their oxidation state in Roman words, okay. in bracket. And then if there is any anion or cation present before or last of the coordination complexes, suppose uh, one example I am giving you that in case of complex chromium mm -hmm. En whole 3 and coordination sphere and then Cl3 is given. So, we have to name in this complex in this way, first we have find out the oxidation number of chromium okay. in this complex. So, oxidation number will come to mm -hmm. 3 and the ligand is ethylene diamine that is the neutral ligand. So, as the number is given 3, so we have to say trees, then we in the bracket we have to write trees and the bracket will start with the ethylene diamine. Mm -hmm. This indicates the 3, En whole 3 is written that 3 we have not write here tri, we have to use tree, T R I S tris. Okay. Then the name of central metal that is chromium. Okay. As the complex indicates, Cl3 is outside the coordination sphere. Mm -hmm. It will ionize as Cl3 minus. So overall the charge on the complex will come 3 plus. Okay. That means it is a cationic complex. All right. So we have to write the chromium. Okay. And after that its oxidation number mm -hmm. in the bracket Roman mud we have to write 3. Okay. So, overall we have completed trace, ethylene diamine, mm -hmm. chromium 3 and then Cl3 is present outside the coordination sphere. Okay. So, we have to write chloride, not its number, only right. chloride. Mm -hmm. So, this is the sequence we have to follow to give the IPIC name of the complexes. Okay. One important question I just also want to explain something. sir. Suppose uh, our complex is chromium hexaamine and overall three charges given. So, what should the naming of this, uh, IPIC name of this complex? Now, students or learners should be able to understand clearly about this naming. Mm -hmm. As Dr. Rajiv told you, there are certain rules, but something you should also know. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, as Dr. Rajiv told you, that we should be able to find out the nature of the complex. Mm -hmm. The nature of complex is complex may be positively charged, may be negatively charged mm -hmm. or may be neutral. The three type of complexes are there. Mm -hmm. Neutral means because generally students confused here. If suppose we take K4 FeCN6, mm -hmm. it is not a neutral complex. Oh, yeah. Students should be clear mm -hmm. because this has no charge. Mm -hmm. But since potassium is present outside the coordination sphere, so overall complex will have four negative charge. Yeah. So this is an ionic complex. Okay. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we take CO, NH3, 6, Cl3. Again, it is neutral, mm -hmm. no charge. Mm -hmm. But if you see the complex, complex will always cationic. Mm -hmm. It will have three positive charge. Because generally, it's been confused. Because it's a neutral complex. Mm -hmm. eh? Not a neutral. There is no charge. No charge. Okay. Now, neutral means that suppose you take NiCO4. Mm -hmm. It has no charge. Mm -hmm. Neither nickel is zero. Carbon monoxide is also zero. Mm -hmm. So, they have no charge. That is known as neutral mm -hmm. complexes. One more important point is, the complex names should be written always in single word. Mm. CO NS36 mm. 3 plus. So this is you should be write down hexaamine mm. okay. chromium 3. Mm. You should be mm. this is first you take hexa mm. okay. then space uh, it should be then, continuous. Oh, then okay. it should be a single line single okay. line. Mm. One complex single name. Mm -hmm. So complex name should be a single word. Mm. Okay. This is the most important. Secondly Raj uh, already told you that use alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. Here again is because sometimes mm -hmm. the student confused. 
Okay. Suppose if four ammonia is there, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't say we should see in T. No. Not because not. we have to see the ligands. Ligand mm -hmm. is yeah. amine mm -hmm. A. So you have to see the what type of ligand H. Ligand can you have to see the name of ligands, not the number of ligands. This is the most important. Generally, in case of anionic ligands, mm -hmm. we replaced E by O. Okay. Sulfate, sulfato, mm -hmm. sulfide, sulfito, okay. mm -hmm. or acetate, acetato. Mm -hmm. So you can put generally. Okay. But there are few examples where you can pay two both the ways. Mm -hmm. Generally, use IDE, chloride. Mm -hmm. okay. Chloride can be written as chloro as well as chlorido. Okay. Similarly, bromide can be written as bromo as well as bromido. Mm -hmm. This one should be clear. Chloride, fluoride, fluoro or fluorido. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or iodide, iodo or iodido. Okay. Students can easily write down the name. Mm -hmm. Now for neutral ligands, except three. I am repeating again, mm -hmm. except three. If ammonia is there, write down A double M I N E. Mm -hmm. For water, aqua. Mm -hmm. A Q U A. Okay. Mm -hmm. For carbon monoxide, carbonyl. Mm -hmm. And another is N O nitrosyl. Mm -hmm. Okay. After these four. All the naming of neutral ligand will be given as such. Okay. Suppose ethylene diamine will be called as ethylene diamine, mm -hmm. or you can take triethylene diamine will be called as triethylene diamine. Okay. Arsine will be called as arsine. Mm -hmm. Naming remains same except mm -hmm. these four. One more category is there, although I don't think so in the syllabus or not. Cationic ligands are also there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, NO plus mm -hmm. because NO plus creates some problems here. Mm -hmm. So, if you write down NO, you consider NO is a cationic ligand, mm -hmm. then you put nitrosilium, mm -hmm. NITRO. S Y L hmm. put I U M. Hmm. Then you take this is okay. then That's for example I am repeating again oh. here. In such cases, if you consider positive ligand, okay. the oxidation instead of central metal ion will change. Okay. For example, you take N A C N five N O. If you take neutral ligand, then the oxidation number of iron will be here. Again, I am repeating. If you take N O is a neutral ligand, mm -hmm. then you put here C N five mm -hmm. iron three that is Two minus sign, mm -hmm. iron two. If you take, then three minus sign. Mm -hmm. If you take one positive charge, NO plus, mm -hmm. then one positive charge is there. Mm -hmm. Then only four cyanide will remain. Mm -hmm. So if you take iron two, mm -hmm. so then become two plus. Okay. So similarly, iron three, you mm -hmm. take one minus charge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the one more category is there. I'm again addition that numbering of ligands. Okay. There are two different ways. One way is ligand do not have mm -hmm. di Tri, tetra in their name. Okay. Then you take one ligand mono. Mm -hmm. there, if there are two ligands, bi or di. Mm -hmm. Three ligand tri. Right. If the ligand themselves have di, tri in their names, mm -hmm. okay. Then you can now use di or tri so on. Just for example, okay. mm -hmm. Rajiv, Doctor Rajiv mm -hmm. told you ethylene di. I mean, di what is always in mm -hmm. ethylene. Right. So you put tris. Mm -hmm. The okay. CO, EN3, tris, mm -hmm. ethylene di, I mean. One more category there. Sometimes it is confused here. I have just given the example just now, where only either cation is complex or mm -hmm. anion is complex. Okay. There are certain compounds where both anion or cation are complexes. For example, you take Cu NS three four, Cu Cl four, both are cationic complex, mm -hmm. anion is also complex. Mm -hmm. right. There is no change in the naming. Mm -hmm. First species will always have positive charge. Mm -hmm. Second species will always have negative charge. Okay. So first like I have just told you Cu NS three four two plus okay. that is tetra I mean copper two. Okay. Then Cu Cl four it is two negative charge. Okay. So tetra chloro cuprate two. Cationic complexes are there. Mm. Cationic neutral. Mm. Then there is no change in the name of the central metal ion. Cobalt I mean cobalt nickel I mean nickel. But if complex are negative charge, then you should add ATE cobaltate mm -hmm. nickelate zincate. Or benedict, ferrite, so okay. on. I hope our learners have understood about the IUPAC naming, and it's very important to follow the rules if you want to give your compounds a correct name. And now something important. Yes, there are so many important things in this chapter. Professor, please tell us about the valence bond theory. Uh, this is also comes under category of bonding in complexes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, there are different types of methods are there, but we have to concentrate first only valence bond theory. Mm -hmm. I think I have already studied the valence bond theory in chemical bonding. Mm -hmm. Similarly, valence bond theory was given by this is Huns and Mulliken. Okay. Now this theory is based actually from where this theory is originated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, when complex was synthesized, 
There are two complexes having same at line and same oxidant state, only ligands were different. For example, CONH363 plus and COF63 minus. When the magnitude of these compounds were found, mm -hmm. it has been found that one is diametric, other is paramagnetic mm -hmm. in nature. It was the scientists were very surprised. Why it is so? Okay. Because Pauling was the chemist who has given the idea of chemical bonding. Mm -hmm. Now, Pauling was aware only that on the basis of chemical bonding, he has tried to explain the nature of difference in the bonding. Mm -hmm. According to Pauling, he has ex tried to explain since fluoride is the more electronegative nature as mm -hmm. compared to ammonia. So, cobalt fluorine bond should be ionic mm -hmm. and cobalt nitrogen bond should be covalent in nature. So, covalent means sharing of electrons mm -hmm. becomes diametric mm -hmm. and ionic means transfer of electrons becomes paramagnetic in nature. Okay. Now, in science, without experiment, nothing is true. Yes. So, same Pauling has tried to explain, he has synthesized the compounds by taking the another metal ion, mm -hmm. but he is surprised to see that they have same magnetic movement. For example, okay. NiNS362 plus and NiF64 minus. And he found that both the compounds having same value of magnetic movement. So, his idea, his idea has been rejected. Okay. He himself rejected his idea. Okay. Now, Huggins was the another chemist who has explained the given the idea of inner and outer orbital complexes. Okay. Inner and outer means because I'll give you the brief mm -hmm. this introduction about the inner complexes. It should, should be clear N minus 1 D2 NS and P3. It means 3D. If 3D orbital is used for hybridization along with okay. 4S and 4P, you can say D2 SP3. Okay. That is called inner orbital complexes okay so we take 5d orbitals 3d mm -hmm. orbitals mm -hmm. then one s orbital mm -hmm. and three p orbital mm -hmm. suppose you take cobalt mm -hmm. now in case of cobalt cona 36 the three plus the oxidation instead of cobalt is plus three okay therefore the electronic configuration of cobalt three plus should be 3d6 mm -hmm. so there are five electrons the five d orbitals are present here now, since two, two d orbitals are utilized for hybridization, mm -hmm. so we have only three orbitals are available. And there are six electrons. Mm -hmm. So all these six electrons are get paired in three orbitals. Mm -hmm. And so you'll find there is no unpaired electrons. Mm -hmm. Therefore, cobalt, that is going to say hexamine cobalt 3H, mm -hmm. diamagnetic. Okay. And COF63 minus NP3 mm -hmm. ND2 mm -hmm. means if 4S. 4p mm -hmm. and 4d orbitals are used for hybridization mm -hmm. then you can say s p3 okay. d2 okay this if this is the case these are called outer orbitals mm -hmm. all right so in case of fluoride he has suggested the complex will be outer orbital mm -hmm. 3d orbitals five electrons will be intact as such okay mm -hmm. five orbitals have level they are distributed one two three four five all the five are found to be unpaired and six one more is paired so four and protons so, COF6 3 minus having 4 electrons mm -hmm. and CONA3 having no unpaired electrons. Therefore, you can say we can clearly explain on the basis of inner and outer orbital complexes. For learners, I will give you an idea here because most of the students are confused. Which will be inner orbital complex, which will be outer orbital complex. Mm -hmm. This statement I am giving only the for 3D block elements. Mm -hmm. For 3D block elements, and they metal ions should present in same oxidation state. Same mm -hmm. metal ions should be same mm -hmm. and present the same oxidation state. Then D1, D2, D3. Okay. Whatsoever the ligands, mm -hmm. complex will be always in our okay. orbital. Mm -hmm. This right. should be clear here. I want to ask you, sir, that what are the applications of coordination compounds in our everyday life we are using yeah. different As I have told the beginning. Mm -hmm. The complex plays a vital role in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you more example here. It, this is the most important part is that if you are perform qualitative analysis. Mm -hmm. In qualitative analysis, you cannot perform without complex formation. Mm -hmm. You want to test for the copper. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare it. This is copper, hex right. hexacyano, ferritine. Right. If you say second and second B group, we have to add yellow aluminum sulfide to separate them mm -hmm. because second B group radicals generally form complexes. Mm -hmm. So they are soluble and second A group radicals do not form complex, they are insoluble. Okay. So we can separate them easily. Third application is iron. I think you are well aware that when you got add potassium ferrocyanide, you get partial blue color. Mm -hmm. 
that has ferrofericyanide. Similarly, you can also explain aluminium. Mm -hmm. Aluminium also form complex with aluminoid agent. Okay. So complex play an important role, first in qualitative analysis, mm -hmm. second in medicine. Okay. In medicine, I have just told you the EDTA is used as an antidote for poisoning of mercury mm -hmm. as well as lead. Now here, generally the general question is asked, can we use EDTA? No, because EDTA is not soluble. So we have to use either sodium salt or mm -hmm. calcium salt of EDTA, which is soluble. Mm -hmm. So if anybody inhale a mercury, you ask him to drink this EDTA solution okay. and after some time he will be okay. okay. Similarly, sodium nitroprusside is used to lower down the blood pressure mm -hmm. during surgery. So there are a lot of organic this, uh, coding compounds used in medicines. Mm -hmm. Again, extraction. We want to extract gold or right. silver. We have to use complexes okay. because you will prepare AgCN to Na, AgCN whole twice mm -hmm. complex or AuCN whole twice that is complex because they are soluble, so they are separated from the rest of the importage okay. and you can easily separate them. Okay. So there are a lot of fabrications with complexes in every field of the life. Okay. I, have already, I have already told you chlorophyll, hemoglobin, without them, mm. we can, you cannot survive. And now Dr. Rajiv, would you like to conclude it? Mm. Yeah. To our listeners, I, I want to say that the, this coordination compound chapter is very interesting. If you go through the getting the basic concepts we have mentioned here and the IPEC naming, the valence bond theory and the Werner theory, these are the most important part from which the most of the questions are asked in the examination. So if you have any queries related to this, you can send us email and we can help you uh, in a big way and the valence bond theory and its applications they are also important topics. So uh, these are the important concepts we have provided you. Learners, I hope you have understood this chapter of coordination compounds. It is very interesting and very important from your examination point of view. Are you jotting down the important points? I'm sure you are. If you have any queries, you can always email us. With our best wishes and be a successful self-learner. Apart from these video programs, you can also listen to our audio programs, which we call live and interactive personal contact programs. Yes, they are live. You can listen to them through our web radio known as Mukt Vityavani and they are very much interactive because we want your participation in those programs. You can always call us in the middle of our audio programs. You can speak to our experts. You can raise your questions and then of course you will get your answers. So we wish you all the luck once again and with this it's a wrap. I have Preet Kaur take leave of you from the studio of NIOS and I thank both my experts, Professor Sulek Chandra thank you. and Dr. Thank Rajiv you. Prasad thank for you. their valuable contribution and time. Good luck. Goodbye. <laughs>